on a blessed day. It is a stellar day here on the mountain. God has been so good to us here today. It is beautiful. I think it hit 70 maybe. Uh, if not that, at least the high 60s. And the sky is bright blue. The chickens had a blast. The chickens actually wandered up onto the deck for the first time and they discovered mm -hmm, the cat's dinner. And boy, oh boy, they like that. The chickens have been put to bed for the evening. The cats have been fed and we are here with our next little project. And you're seeing a background that you don't normally see. That's my Bernina behind me. And today's video is going to be a different type of project. We are going to be doing maintenance on our sewing machine on our vintage Singer 301 and I'm going to be showing you how to clean it and how to oil it and grease it and you know get all the the crud out from the innards crud and dirt and lint it all hangs out together and that can cause stress and it can actually cause breakage on your machines a vintage sewing machine is a treasure and it is a machine that if properly maintained can last many many generations i don't know where i left off sanjay interrupted me so and I am, I am hot, my rosacea is acting up, so I look very rosy. I also have a stunning Singer, I think it's a Singer 128, and it is a shuttle bobbin or a bullet bobbin. It's one of the long skinny ones, and the, uh, the bobbin case looks like a bullet. And that one is a beautiful hand crank machine, and oh, what a joy that is. It's it, tick, 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 tick. It's just so pleasant to use. And of course I have my beautiful Centennial Singer Featherweight. So we have plenty of machines that we can play with and plenty of machines that I can show you how to repair. We can go into more depth as far as, as, far as maintenance and repairs and adjustments at a later date. But today we're just gonna concentrate on our Singer 301 and we are gonna be doing maintenance as far as cleaning out all the dust bunnies and the dust uh, water buffaloes and we're going to be oiling it and greasing it and I'm going to show you how to do all of that. So let me get the camera turned around and we will get started. Okay so I have removed the machine from the table and I'm just taking a cursory look at the outside of the machine and before we start doing any maintenance on it we're gonna make sure that we've taken our needle out. And here's a handy dandy little tip. When I have a broken needle or an old needle or a bent pin, I take an old prescription medicine bottle and I write across the label saying that it is used used and broken needles and pins. This way, if your trash is recycled and people go through it by hand picking out recyclables, they'll see that it says, you know, pins and needles and they'll be careful with it so they don't get hurt. I do the same thing with a large vitamin bottle for my old rotary blades. Once I've used them in the rotary cutter and then also in, in my little chain stitch cutter. Uh, once it's done there, then I put them in the in the big vitamin bottle and I label it use rotary blades. This way no one gets hurt. So I've taken off the foot and I'm tightening down the screw here so it doesn't fall out and I've tightened up where the needle goes and I've already taken the thread out and now we're going to take out the bobbin. So, and if you'll notice, this is the same bobbin that goes into your featherweight. We can put that aside. And let me go over the things that we've got here on our table. I have some old t-shirts that I use to clean with. I have new felt for, there is a felt circle on the bottom of the machine that holds the base plate in. And you can also use felt on your spool holder. You can use, you can use felt on the bottom there also. And that prevents the thread spool from turning and turning and turning and turning and eventually wearing the paint off of your machine. And I'm just using cheap craft felt. My husband has also gotten some industrial felt that you can use as well. These are cleaning swabs in various sizes. And uh, you can see them there. 
I got this packet on Amazon. It's made in China. It was a 500 piece sewing machine and printer cleaning swabs. The pink, pink ones are the ones that I use the most. And that is for getting into the little nooks and crannies and for cleaning old varnished grease out of your gears. I have a standard sewing machine brush that comes, you know, it's a dime a dozen. And I have the I have the screwdriver that comes with your 301. And I have another one that uses various bits. I have this set that my husband got me for the sewing machines. It has all different types, but vintage machines from I would say 1970 back all use flathead screws. They don't use Phillips. And just remember that when you're using your screwdriver, when you are picking a screwdriver, you want to pick one that will fill the slot perfectly. You don't want wiggle room because when you have wiggle room and you try and apply force, you end up stripping your screw. And some of the screws on these old machines are one-offs. In other words, that screw was designed just for that part. So it may not work. So you want to make sure that you have, you don't want to use a tiny screwdriver like this in this big screw because it's really wiggly and you'll end up stripping it and that is not good. So I have a variety of bits on this set that I'm using. And I have another screwdriver that I know works. I have an old toothbrush that I use for scrubbing. I have sewing machine gear, motor gear lubricant. I got this from the featherweight shop. And let's, you don't want to use like a lithium grease or a silicone product. You want to use motor and gear lubricant. And it is it's kind of like the consistency of honey. So that's what you want to use on your gears. And you don't use abundant amounts. You just use enough. I have sewing machine oil. My husband has bought a quart of, basically it's, it's motor oil. There are several different grades of motor oil and it's a mobile motor oil and it has different numbers on it, but you use a different motor oil for one of these old vintage machines than you do for the new computerized Berninas. They have a different, a different grade of, of oil that they use. So we have both of them. But this I also got from the Featherweight Shop and I use it for cleaning and that's why this bottle's almost empty. So yes, I use motor oil to clean my machines. It is the most gentle on the finish and it does a very nice job. Okay, what else do I have here? I have Break Free, which is a, a brake cleaner, cleaner lubricant preservative. And you can use any, any, this many, many different types of brands of this stuff, but it's just, it's called Break Free CLP Cleaner Lubricant Preservative. And I use that in conjunction with these, these cleaning swabs and my t-shirt rags to get the, to try and get the old varnished oil or the grease off. You don't want to use this on your paint. Don't use it on your painted surfaces. I it may damage the paint and you know if you know my 301 the finish is very nice and I don't want to ruin it. And I also have my little five pound weight that I put on my rulers and I use that because it, it's coated in something soft and it's not going to damage the machine and I when I tip the machine on its on its back I rest it up against this because it's not going to slide around and move. And you can see that I have some paper down here on my surface just to keep the cutting table clean. I have a pair of scissors to cut up my t-shirt and I have a paper towel sitting here. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking this weight and put it back here like that. And when you lift your machine, I don't suggest, if it has a handle like this one does, I don't suggest that you that you use this to just carry your machine around. This is meant as an aid when you're carrying it from the bottom. You don't want to just pick it up and walk around with it like that because there's not much inside that's holding this on, but you don't want to 
you don't want it to break and your machine hit the floor because that would be sad. He doesn't like it when his dad's... Okay, so I'm lifting it from under here. That's the safest place to lift it. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the bobbin area. Now, I'm not gonna be removing the bobbin housing this time because I don't need to. I've done it before and I, I've had to adjust the timing. I've done all sorts of things on this. But what I'm doing is I'm just taking this brush and I'm just getting all the lint out of here. If you see that you have thread wound around your bobbin unit, your housing unit, then yes, you do have to remove that. And we can get into that in another video. And if you take off your needle plate, which I'm going to do, just remember that this little arm has to go, this is your needle plate. And this little arm has to go in the slot in your needle plate. If it doesn't, your machine is not going to sew. And in case you don't know, this screw right here, this hand screw, this is what raises and lowers your feed dogs. So if you wanted to, you could do free motion work on this machine by lowering your feed dogs. I think this is the first machine that actually did that. And this is a short bed. And I don't, when I raise this, I only raise it like four fifths of the way up. I don't slam it up against the sewing machine because these pieces can actually ding your paints. So I don't want to do that. And I can see that there's little, there's little marks here and we'll, we'll get into that. But for now, I am going to take off the needle plate. Now, some people, when they do their monthly maintenance on their machine, they will take this piece off. But I don't feel that I need to take this off. This is the hardest screw. I think one of the hardest screws on the machine to actually get to. As you can see, I'm really, really struggling. But you, I, don't, I don't really crank down hard on this. So I don't really need too awful much to get this unscrewed. And once you get it to a certain point, you can just use your fingers to get it out. And you don't wanna pry this up. I'm just, there you go, just lifting it like that. So now when I lift this up, you can see this slot and that's where this arm right here goes. Cause otherwise it just rolls around and you don't want that. So, and you can see that there's some, there are th some dust bunnies on here and there's some old machine oil. And what I like to do is I like to take the part and the screws that go for it up out of my way so I don't lose them and so that the screws stay with the part. Okay, now you can see that there is dust bunnies in here. And we like to get them out. Now, we're going to take the top of the machine off. So I've got to raise you up. This has a removable lid, so I'm taking, and you'll also notice holes. If you see holes on your machine that look like these, those are oil holes. They like to give you lots of locations to put oil because this is a completely mechanical machine. It's It does everything with gears and, camshafts and movable metal pieces. So every time you sit down to sew, you should be putting oil in your machine before you start. And this I like to be careful lifting up because you don't want to bang it. So there is the top. Now, these are wicks and they're made with felt. And those are so that oil will drip down. You'll see that this is the screw that holds the lid, and this is the screw that holds the lid, okay? But there is a wick right over this, there is a wick right over this, and there is a wick right over this. Those are all mechanical parts that like oil. The gears get grease, but everything else gets oil, okay? And here's more oil holes and more and more and more. There's lots of places to put oil. So again, I take the lid off and I take the screws that go with it and I put them in there and I put that aside. This is the wire that goes to your light and it goes down this shaft and the motor is under here. 
when you when you take the hand wheel off you will see that there is a large gear that gear is made out of fiberglass so treat it like an egg don't bang it don't pry don't use a screwdriver to get lint out of it out of the teeth of the gear be very gentle with that because that is the drive gear that is what engages that top of the motor so the motor sits in the back of this machine right here and the shaft of the motor comes up this way in fact this is this is the top of the motor and this is a section of the fiberglass gear and it's underneath this shroud okay that is the innards of the top of the machine and there are plenty of places to oil i'm going to clean but what i'm going to do is i'm going to tell you what to look for and this the, this machine is made out of cast aluminum. Cast aluminum is brittle, so be very, very careful with it. This has pin hinges that just lift off like that. You can see the little hinge right here. So be very, very careful with those hinges, okay? Because they're fragile. We'll put that over there. And now you should start to see those things that I wanted to show you. This is a really good camera. <laughs> problem is the app that I'm using is not very good so it won't let me use the macro macro feature of the camera can we can we get some clarity here please hello there we go that's what I wanted to show you you see that little hole right there that is an oil hole and you want to put a drop or two of oil in there okay and as you move up you'll have to look carefully I don't I don't know how to go about showing the all the innards to you that little hole there is another oil hole there's one right there as well and you're going to want to oil these places this place that place anywhere where two pieces of metal connect they're going to want some oil there's also an oil port uh, right there and again there's an oil hole there and there's another one on this piece here and there's some all over the place basically if you see a part that moves you want to oil it I'm just going to be going over the machine with the rag and I'm going to be wiping out any lint that I see and I don't really see any because I've done this not too long ago and you want to inspect all of these metal parts. And if you see something that looks like a tea stain or a coffee stain, that is most probably, if you have not been maintaining your machine, that is most prob probably varnished oil. What happens to oil when it sits for a long period of time? It turns into like a shellac and mm, moving parts don't like that. So you need to get that off. And for that purpose and that purpose only, I would use this, the brake cleaner. I would just take a little bit of, just a wee bit, just a wee bit like that. And I would get in there and I would try and wipe off the varnish. Again, you don't want to put this on the painted surface because that's no bueno. And again, you're looking for anything that moves. Uh, and you can see that there are little brown, like a brown glaze on some of these parts. And that is old motor oil. And that's fine. That's, I mean, you can, you can take the whole machine apart and you can soak these in the brake cleaner and you can scrub them and get it all brandy new, but it's not impeding the functioning of the machine right now. So what you're going to do is you are going to look for any one of these holes. And you're not going to flood it. I mean, you're not, you're not putting a whole quart of oil in here. You are putting a drop, a drop. Anywhere where you see one of those little oil ports. And in here, and in here, and you can put it. There's an oil port up here, okay? You can put it up here. So anything that moves should have a wee bit of oil on it. Not a ton, just a wee bit. So we can see that there is an oil port here. And I'm doing this through the camera lens, so there, that's an oil hole. And again, you're not putting a ton. And anywhere you see two pieces of metal that come together or an oil hole, that's where you're putting some oil, okay? And you can put a little bit of oil on the motor shaft, not a lot. Don't put it on the gears. The gears take grease. Anything with teeth takes grease. And there really is no heavy duty maintenance at this point. What I can do is, because I keep this machine well cared for. 
So let me get one of these swabs and I will show you how I clean out the gears if it's needed. This really isn't needed. I would take one of these swabs and I would spray a wee bit of this on it and I would get in the teeth, okay? And I would just go in here like this, you turn it and you do every tooth. If you see any lint, you take the lint out. If you see any thread, you take the thread out. So you can see that this is wobbling. That's a cam. It's like a camshaft in your car. It's not a round piece. This is round. The gear is round. This is oblong. It's an oddball shape. And that is what drives your sewing machine. And you can see that there's a gear down here deeper too. No, you really can't. It's dark in there. The gears always get grease, not oil. The cams and where metal comes together get oil. I would put some oil right here. This is an oil, oil look hole. This is an oil hole because through the bottom of that hole, there is one of these cam drive shafts. And I would put some oil in here. And you can just, you know, put oil here, just to keep working nicely and some oil over here. But as far as grease is concerned, sparing, sparingly, okay, sparing. We don't use a lot of it. This is kind of like honey, okay? So I'm just going to, see, just a, a wee bit, so like, see, just a little bit. And you just put it on there. Not a lot, just a little tiny dab will do you. And then you can also put grease down here, but again, not much because the, I can already see a drop, drop of grease that is there from up here. And again, with this fiberglass drive wheel, drive gear, you wanna make sure that there is no lint in it, there's no thread, dust bunnies, whatever. And very sparingly, after you've taken one of these swabs and cleaned it out, you add a wee bit of grease, not a lot just a little bit you can work it like this and now all the all the gear grease has been transferred through all of the gears so you really don't need any more up here this this syringe full of grease will last you a very long time unless you are a sewing machine mechanic and then not so much as far as the oil again i'm going to put oil in this hole i'm going to put oil on this cam and in this hole and down here and then in here in there in there you can see there's already plenty of oil there you really don't need too much and that is it for the top so now i'm gonna lay this down on its side and now we're gonna take the bottom off this is the bottom turn screw and there's a piece of felt on it And this here is your felt liner. And you can use the industrial felt and you can make a new one. You can, if you have one in here, if you have this, you can use it as a template to cut a new one. And again, you can take this off and you can inspect it and you can see how much oil is sitting here. Okay, you see all that? That's because, and, it's, and it, a lot of it feels very gummy and varnished. If you can see that sheen, that's varnish. But for this purpose, I'm going to take some of this brake cleaner, and again, not a lot. You can feel you can feel that it's gummy. The rag, as the rag goes through it, it kind of there's a drag. And this is probably not very good for your nails if you get your nails did like I do. See that? See how black that is? That's decades worth of kakadudu poo poo. Okay, and that's not good. All that oil drips down the machine because the oil that we put up top will drip down. And the oil that we put down here at the bottom will drip. This is like really dirty. So yeah, that's, that's, that is, I can see some of the far varnish has, has lifted, but I'm not going to do any more because it's not going to impede the function of the machine. Okay, so I'm going to throw this rag out. And now, like I said, you can use this felt and you as a template, or you can actually use this metal piece as a template to cut yourself a new one, if it's so desired. This one is in pretty good condition. So I'm going to be taking this and the piece of felt that screw that goes in between this hand screw and the bottom and the hand screw and I'm going to be putting it aside out of my way and now we're going to be doing basically the same thing that we did up top 
down here. We're going to be looking for places that are cruddy that could use a good scrub. This is the back of your bobbin. That is the back of your bobbin housing. And I can see a piece of lint there. And I see a little bit of lint here. That is the bottom of your motor. And that has a little tiny oil port. So you would put a drop in there. And again, what we're doing is we're looking at this machine. There's really no, no lint in here to speak of. So I am seeing a lot of oil already in here. So you can turn the hand wheel and you can see your gears. Those take grease, but you can see how this is moving. So you're gonna wanna put some oil here. See how that moves? And there is a little oil port on the top, a little one there, a little bit here. And down here, you can see where I can get some oil. And down in here, basically anything that moves. And this is a cam. This is another thing that is not, it's round, but it's, the hole is not centered in it. So that drives your machine. Okay, and basically anything that moves wants a little oil. I am looking at these gears and they don't look bad at all. Just a very small amount of grease. And then you just work it together. Okay, that's all you need. You're done. This is a short bed 301. Short bed 301s are meant to go into tables. If yours has a long bed, in other words, this piece comes out further, then that is meant to be a portable. You will notice on the short beds that there is another plug here. This is the old plug that came with this machine and that goes in here. But you're going to notice that there's only one cord coming off of this. The short beds can have the foot pedal plugged in here and sit in the table. So they don't, it doesn't have to be on this plug. However, I got a replacement. So like the portable that has two pieces coming out of here. So you have this piece that goes to the electrical outlet and then there's another wire that comes off that connects to the foot pedal. And I am using a replacement. So I have the foot pedal and the power coming into this plug. You do have the option, if you have this plug, of using that separately for, for your foot pedal. But mine has, it, the, and this is identical to the featherweight. The foot pedal that comes with this machine is also identical to the featherweight. And I hate it. I think it's the most bizarre design. You can see this one here has two the two wires coming out of it. And you see that this is just so unpleasant to have to use because your foot keeps hitting this pedal and this is the pedal that moves things. So I don't I don't use these. I have an aftermarket one that is just a normal like gas pedal and I prefer that. I'm going to take this off, the hand wheel off. I've taken the screw out of this and now I'm just very carefully unscrewing this all the way. And now this is a clutch and you can see that it has two prongs on it. Uh, and that sits in here. And you want to remember that the little bumps sit on the outside. They don't, it doesn't go like this, okay? And now this comes off and you have to be careful because this gear is made out of fiberglass. And you can see this is the shaft from the motor and I am gonna put a wee bit of oil on it, not a lot not oil, grease. I'm going to put a little grease on it. There's really not that much to this. I'm just being careful putting this back because it is fiberglass and now I'm rotating it to move the grease around and I'm putting the clutch back on and I'm not making any adjustments or anything. I'm just just taking things apart to clean out any visible lint and to oil everything, oil and grease everything. That is about all you have to do. Now, if I didn't have the camera to deal with, then this would take about five minutes. We're going to put this back on and then we're going to clean the outside of the machine. And I've actually found this on the inside. <laughs> That's not where it goes. This is to protect the paint. And again, you don't need a death grip just snug. And these rubber feet, if you're not using your machine in a table, these rubber feet can be replaced. They do sell them. So just keep that in mind. If, it, if you're using it on a tabletop and it's rocking a little, 
these feet can be replaced. And now what I'm doing is I'm looking at the machine here and I'm saying I need me a piece of this here t-shirt. Okay, you see that? I just put a line of oil on the machine, okay? Oil will attract lint. And look at that. Look at how nice and clean that gets. I'm doing that to all the surfaces. Normally I would do it on the back also, but I have limited workspace here. So I'm just taking some machine oil. And you want to be gentle with your decals because they are very, very thin and they can wear very, very quickly. Now, you're going to see up here that we have some holes. There is a hole here and there is a hole here. Those are all holes. There's also a hole here and a hole here. And those are for oil. These holes are screw holes. And if you look at them, you can see little grooves in there, threads. That's not an oil hole. So here you want to put a wee bit of oil. Not a lot. A little dab will do you. But that's like the last place it needs oil. Now I'm going to take some oil and I'm just going to dab it around. And I'm going to use my soft t-shirt rag just to clean the machine. Just to give it a nice little polish. Machine oil is not abrasive. It won't destroy your paint job. It won't destroy your decals. And it's very, very gentle, but it will clean your machine nicely. And I would do the same thing on the back and do the motor oil around the motor housing. And I'm getting the back side of this down here. This may be a, a wear mark. I think these are wear marks into the actual clear coat finish because I can feel an edge. So that's telling me that the, this is not schmutz, this is clear coat that has been worn off. So you wanna be gentle with that. And you don't, you can put oil here, a little oil in here, but you don't wanna put oil, you can put a drop of oil on your hook, but you don't wanna put a lot of oil in your bobbin, in the where, the, where the bobbin casing goes because your bobbin thread will get filled with oil. And you can see I do this on a pretty regular basis because there was very little lint in there. And again, we're gonna be careful with these pins because they are delicate and they just sit here. There's that. And we're gonna take the T-shirt and we're gonna rub this down and clean it, give it a little love. And we are going to put some oil in these oil holes, even though we've already oiled everything. I can see oil glistening on those wicks, so they really don't need any oil. This is the only, these vintage machines, yes, you can blow. And you can actually use canned air to blow the lint out. And the reason that you can do that is because you can access wherever the lint is going to sit. So you can see we flipped it over, we took the bottom off, and we were able to get anything that we saw out of there. On one of the computerized machines, you do not want to blow the air and the lint into the internal workings of the machine because you can't get to it. And it's going to build up and it's gonna be loaded up with machine oil and lint and that's going to get thicker and thicker and thicker. And the more you blow, the more you blow lint in there. And again, it's just gonna keep building up to the point where the nylon gears and the plastic parts that are holding this machine together and making it work are not going to work anymore. Don't blow stuff into the body of your machine. That is no bueno. On a vintage machine, you can get away with it because you have access to everything. We have this here thing. You see that right there? Yeah, you can see that. You see that little, that has to go in this notch. If it doesn't, your machine is not going to work. We check under here and we make sure that that toe is in there. If it is, you're good to go. And you may also want to do this when you lift this up. That way you have some kind of cushion so that these two painted surfaces don't run into each other and don't wear or give you any dings or dents or and now these screws, I can just sit here and do this. And that's because no one has really manhandled these screws before. And this whole thing didn't take very long. I took my time because I was dealing with the camera and everything. If you do 
five to ten minutes of maintenance once a month, this machine will last you many, many generations. So that in a nutshell is the whole monthly maintenance that I do on my vintage Singer 301. And it's going to be very similar for the featherweight and the bobbin area is the same bobbin area that this machine has. So it's going to be the same thing for that. You're just going to get in there. You're going to remove any visible threads or lint or gummed up oil. You're going to clean it. You're going to re-oil it. You're not going to use any harsh chemicals on the paint job. And now your machine is good to go. And at this point, I will be putting a brand new fresh needle in the machine when I put it back in the table. And it will be ready to give me another month worth of happiness and joy. On that note, I'm going to get out of here right now. I invite you all to please come on over to my Facebook group, The Flock. I will have a link to it in the description. And I will try to put a card, a little information card up there. <laughs> and I also invite you to join my Patreon. I am doing, I'm trying to work up the stamina and try and improve my health enough so that I can do more and more and more. Again, I'm going to be doing the first giveaway and the giveaway is for my top rooster tier and that is eight, it's only eight dollars a month and you're getting at least one free pattern every month. So the cost of that alone is a bargain because most patterns are about anywhere, they start at like mm, eight, nine dollars for, for the same amount of money that you get for a pattern you're getting the free pattern and you're getting my devotional I'm going to be doing a monthly diary and there's going to be live streams in patreon once I like I said as I build up my stamina I will be doing more and more and more things over there the giveaways are for the top tier but you're getting the the bird patterns for this top two tiers the top hen club and the top rooster club get access to the free patterns if you love my channel and you just want to show a little bit of support, I have a $3 option. Again, if you would like to share your work, please come over to The Flock. If you'd like to share your, your daily devotionals, please come over to The Flock on Facebook. I don't do Facebook. I don't like Facebook, but I do have the Facebook group. And so when I go on to Facebook, I go straight to my group and that's it. I don't, I don't look at the news feed. I don't get involved in any of the... Hmm. Yeah, I will be doing the very first giveaway for the Top Rooster Club. I have a layer cake and these are brand new. They just came out. Wild Blossoms. And this is a stunning, stunning, stunning jelly roll. It is beautiful. And I have a jelly roll and I have a layer cake. So I'm going to let the winner decide whether or not they would like the jelly roll or the layer cake. And I will do project with whatever they don't choose. The giveaways will be done by the 15th of every month. And the new patterns that are coming out, my bird patterns, they're coming out on the first of every month. I will be launching the, what I, my version of an owl. And I think he's absolutely adorable. And I think you're all going to love him. And the last bird I did, everybody loves. And he's kind of got like a little bit of a turkey head. And he's on a, he's got some funny looking feet. And I'm just having a blast designing those. So on that note, I think I'm going to get out of here. I've given you all the updates. And I do hope you will come and join me over on Facebook and, and on Patreon. I want you to have a very, very blessed day. A very blessed week. Go out and find God. Take your camera. Take your phone. Go out and find God. He's everywhere. All you have to do is look and you will find his gifts. I love you all very much. You mean the world to me. Your comments, oh my. Your comments make my days. You are so kind in the comments. So please do consider subscribing, liking the video, leaving a comment. You have a very blessed day. I love you all. God bless. Good night, Elizabeth. Good night, Campbell.